Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome back to another video. So we've got another scope review to do today. Uh, this was again by Texas Precision Optics. It is the VT 4.7 to 29 by 56 first focal plane scope. So let's go ahead and let's take this thing out of the box and let's check out this scope. And welcome back. So yes, uh, like I said, uh, TPO did send me the scope to do a test and a review on it. I've actually had it for a while now, uh, but I've been so busy doing other videos, I'm just now getting around to doing it. But let's go ahead and let's relocate the camera. Let's do an unboxing and then let's talk about the specifics of this scope. Then we're going to get it mounted to a rifle. We're going to take it to the range. We're going to test it and we're going to see how it works. All right, so let's go ahead and take this thing out of the box and see what it's all about. Once again, nice packaging. They've got a magnetic flap on the scope. Uh, you open up the box right away and you get, immediately you get a manual. Uh, this is actually uh, just like all their other manuals. It's full color and it does a pretty good job of outlining uh, exactly what this scope is all about. So along with the manual, you get all the, uh, the garden variety, various and sundries. You get the, the cleaning cloth. Uh, once again, you get a pair of batteries because this does have an illuminated reticle on it. Uh, you do get an Allen key to uh, make some adjustments. You get another Allen key here. You get a sunshade with the scope. You get a kill flash with the scope. Uh, if you don't know what a kill flash is, we'll talk about that just briefly. And then quite obviously you get the scope itself. Uh, once again, they've done a very nice job of packaging this thing up. This is a custom fit foam case designed just for specifically holding the scope and they did a really nice job. And as always, you get the cantilever style mount with it. All right, so let's talk about some uh, specifics of this, of this particular scope. Now, like I said, you do get a sunshade with it, very well built sunshade. They got some kind of texturing on it here so you can actually grab a hold of it. Uh, you do get a kill flash with it. Now, for those of you who may or may not know what a kill flash is, uh, kill flash actually has several functions, uh, not least of which is actually it cuts down the glare on your objective lens. It also will reduce the glare in your scope picture, which is, which is very handy. It's kind of nice that they give this to you. They wouldn't have to. Typically, you have to buy these yourself. Uh, you also get uh, flip covers, just like you do with every other TPO scope. Uh, working from the eyepiece end of the scope, moving, moving forward, uh, once again, you have... Uh, a focusing eyepiece which is very very nice you have your power ring right here it moves very freely it's uh, very very positive it's very smooth really like that a lot uh, it's mounted on a 35 millimeter tube this is a pretty beefy tube and it's completely made out of uh, one piece aircraft grade aluminum very heavy construction very nicely constructed very very durable uh, you of course get the cantilever style mount with it uh, moving forward, you come into a 56 millimeter objective lens. Uh, whole overall length of the scope is 14.7 inches. It weighs 37 ounces. No question about it, this is going to add some weight to the top of your rifle. Uh, I already stated it's got a 35 millimeter tube size. Eye relief is 3.8 inches ish, so right around 4 inches worth of eye relief. Uh, field of view on this scope at the lowest power setting is 16 feet at 100 yards. At the highest power setting, it's 4 feet at 100 yards. Uh, one click on the adjustments for either uh, elevation or windage is 1 eighth of an inch. So very fine adjustments. Uh, you have plus or minus 35 MOA worth adjustment from, uh, from optical center on the turrets themselves. It is fog proof, it is shock proof, and it is waterproof. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the functionality of the scope and, and how to do its basic operations. Now, like I stated earlier, it's got a fully focusing eyepiece, which is really, really nice. Uh, I really like that. Anytime I get a scope, this is one of the features I look for. Uh, once again, uh, we've got target style turrets or tactical style turrets. And just like every other scope I've had from Texas Precision, you lift up on the turret, 
make your click adjustments, push down on the turret, lock it into place, and there's no way they can move. So very, very nice and positive. You can really feel the clicks. They're very, very tactile. They're not horribly audible, so they're a little quiet, at least on the um, elevation turret. Doesn't make hardly any noise at all, but you can certainly feel the clicks. It's not an issue. Uh, windage knob, same thing. You have to lift up on the windage knob. Now the windage knob, I can very distinctly hear a click. I can very distinctly feel a click, but it's, it's slightly different than the elevation knob where I can't hear it. I can very much, this one's very, the windage is very audible and it's very tactile, so I can certainly feel that. And now the other nice feature that this scope has, if you turn it over, it's got side full or side adjust parallax on it, which is actually pretty much of a high-end feature. Uh, any scope that you get on the higher end of the spectrum typically will have side, uh, side adjust parallax, and this scope is no exception. This, this has it as well. It goes from, I believe, 15 meters or 15 yards to 800 and then to a fin infinity, uh, all, with, all with the side, uh, side adjust here. This also has an illuminated reticle, and the illuminated reticle knob is a stack knob on top of the parallax adjust knob. Uh, it comes in three different colors, red, green, and blue. Uh, I will show you the reticle here in a little bit, but what's the one thing I liked about this reticle uh, is the lighted portion isn't busy. It's got all of the other adjustments and, and graduations you would expect to see in there, but when you light it up, it only lights up the crosshairs, which is actually something I very much like. Uh, the scope is first focal plane, so when you're making your adjustments on your power ring, your reticle will get larger and smaller with the power ring adjustment. So that's the overall function of the scope. Let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's peer through the scope and let's take a look at the clarity of the scope. Uh, let's go through the power ranges and let's take a look at the reticle. All right, so we've got the scope. Uh, I've got it peering out the door of my shop across the neighborhood here. Uh, you can see this is the lowest power setting, 4.7. It's very, very clear. Uh, it's very, very visible. I, I'm really happy with the quality of the optics here. And forgive me, I'm going to have to try and play the game with the camera focus here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this up. There, I'm at 16 power, 26 power, 29 power. So it's, it's not, the camera is not doing it any justice because the camera wants to focus on the reticle and not focus on the background. And I can't seem to quite get the camera to play nice with the, uh, with the autofocus of the camera. So, but I, I'm, I'm here to tell you that even at 29 power, uh, the picture's clear enough where if I'm looking at that rooftop with my eye, uh, it's, it's extremely clear and I can pretty much count shingles. So. It's, it's a very clear picture. I just wish the camera was playing a little nicer with the autofocus. And it's because it's a first focal plane scope. And when I get it all dialed in, so now I've got it back down to, that's back down to about 20 power. You can still see very, very clearly. Try and get the camera to focus. So there you can see the clarity on the rooftop of the shingles. Does a really nice job of it. So let's go ahead and let's, I'm going to close the door and turn the lights off. Let's take a look at the reticle. We're going to take a look at the reticle here. Now I'm going to zoom it in just big enough so that the, uh, the, main, the main crosshairs are in there. And let's go ahead and turn the reticle on. There's red on three, red on two, red on one, off, blue on three, blue on two, Blue on one, off, green, three, setting two, setting one. Now what you, what you notice is it only illuminates the crosshair. It doesn't illuminate the larger duplex on the outer edge and it does not uh, illuminate any of the cross hatches and range finding capabilities below the scope. It just illuminates the crosshair, which, which is fine with me. Uh, I, I, like I said previously, I would prefer that it just uh, illuminated the center dot, but that being what it is. So let me turn the power back down. Get it recentered. There's green. So that's what it looks like uh, at, at the lowest magnification. 
There's blue. Red. So there you can see what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've mounted this thing to my Ruger American Predator 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, things I don't like about the scope, and I can only really find one, uh, the weight. It weighs 2.3 pounds. But when you go and you look at all the other major scope manufacturers, they all weigh about that same weight. They're all 30 ounces, 34 ounces, 35 ounces. So this thing is within a few ounces of everybody else. The only one that I found that was considerably lighter was an Athlon Kronos, and that weighed 1.3 pounds, which is you know a full pound lighter. It's a very light scope. Uh, I don't know anything about the Athlon Kronos, but I do know that it costs about $1,500, $1,600. So you're looking at a third the price to have this set up right here. All that being said, it's time to get this thing to the range. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bore sight this thing. I'll get it zeroed in at 100 yards. Unfortunately, the longest I can stretch this thing out to is about 300 yards. That's the longest range I have at my uh, disposal. I don't have a, a, a match level range or a thousand yard range uh, anywhere where I can shoot this thing. But I figure if I can hit a six inch steel plate at 300 yards, that would, should be a fairly good test. So let's go ahead and let's get this thing to the range and let's shoot it. All right, so we're out on the range today and I got to apologize. I can't even give you 300 yards today because... Uh, the farmer who usually cuts this field, which would allow me to stretch this thing out to 300 yards, hasn't cut the field yet for haying. So we're just going to have to go with 100 yards and we're just going to have to do a basic accuracy testing. But uh, I can't, the grass is too tall, it covers up the targets and I can't see out to 300 yards to actually try this thing at longer distance. But we're going to do some accuracy testing anyway at 100 yards just to see how this thing dials in. So I've got I've got my target set up down there. I've got my target cam set up down there. Let's go ahead and let's shoot this thing at 100 yards and see what kind of groups I can get. Now this is my uh, Ruger American Predator. I know this gun is capable of producing is capable of producing half MOA groups. If I do my job, it will do its job. So I know the gun will do it. I had a Vortex 4 to 12 by 44 millimeter scope on this before, and I was shooting sub MOA half inch groups at 100 yards with this ammo, cellar and bellow, uh, 140 grain soft point hunting ammo. So I know the gun will do it. Now the question is, will the scope do it? So let's go ahead and let's squeeze off five shots and see what kind of a group we get. All right, so uh, I see in the scope, I had one really bad flyer, and that was probably my fault. Okay, let's shoot five more and see what happens.
All right, let's see what we can get done here. Five shots, that group was much, much tighter. All right, so much better group. Uh, can't blame the scope, can't blame the gum, can't blame the ammo on the first two groups. I can only blame me because I just punched out that group and it wasn't an issue. So we're sub MOA at 100 yards with that scope. Uh, the scope is doing its job. So at the end of the day, is the scope accurate? At 100 yards, the scope is capable of punching one inch groups. Now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to try and find a spot later and probably do that in a future video where I can stretch this thing out and maybe get three, four, five hundred yards out of it and see how it does at 500 yards. But the gun can shoot sub MOA groups. All right, so what are my thoughts on this scope? Well, let's talk about what this scope is. This scope is a sub $500, 4.7 to 29 power scope. It's got a 56 millimeter bell on it, and it's, it's running on a 35 millimeter tube. Uh, at 100 yards, it shoots sub MOA with, hunting, with factory hunting ammo and a gun that I know has been proven to shoot sub MOA, and it works. When I did my zeroing, the eighth inch click was dead on. Uh, it was right on the money. I, I shot my first three shots. I measured the center of my group to where it was supposed to be. I made my adjustments and it was almost exactly where it needed to be. I had to do just a little bit of tweaking here and there, but for the most part, the eighth inch clicks were dead on the money. Do I like the scope? Actually, I do. Uh, I like the scope for a couple of reasons. One, it's under 500 bucks and two, it's doing its job. The last five shots, I just banged out five shots fairly quickly. I didn't take a whole lot of time and I just wanted to see how fast I could get shots on steel, and it did exactly that. It put five shots on steel at 100 yards in fairly efficient manner. At the end of the day, uh, the, the Texas Precision Optics Sniper 4 to 7 by 29 by 56 scope, yeah, I think it's a good buy for the money. Uh, if, you're, if you're on a budget and you want to put some pretty serious optics on the top of your rifle, 
something that I, that's akin to the Hubble telescope, uh, this would be a good way to go. That's if you don't have $1,500 to $3,500 to spend on a, on a higher end optic, this certainly would fill the bill. Uh, I'm going to try and find a range where I can see if I can stretch it out to see how it works, but I am very happy so far with the performance. I will keep shooting the scope and I will keep using it and, and let you know on a later date and I will try to find a range where I can get some more distance and we'll see how this thing does at longer distance and then I'll let you know at that time what the, uh, what the durability is. But for $500, you hardly can't go wrong and I know right now on the Texas Precision Optics website, they're selling them for $399.99. Now you'll notice that I do not have an affiliate link for Texas Precision Optics. They've actually offered it to me and I've turned them down. I'm not gonna do an affiliate link because then I feel like I owe them and I don't want to owe them. I want to give you an honest review and my honest review is, is I think this scope is worth the money. With that, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. This is Ed with Jack of All Trades. If you're liking what you see here and you're liking this kind of video content, please do me the huge favor of hitting that like and subscribe button down below. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos and hit me with some comments. Have you got experience with this scope? Have you used it? How do you like it? or any questions that you may have. With that, let's go ahead and finish this video off. As always, thank you for stopping by and we will see you on the next video.